That's great, isn't it? They're trying to make it more interesting. Yes. Yeah. Someone at Carl got there. Twenty pounds humour. Let's make it two hundred. <laughs> at least they're watch. Exactly. That's what I'd be like though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to go to the doctors. You know what I'm like. I uh, thought two hundred pound tumour. I know. It's just that that thing. I mean, you know what I'm like. I don't like. Uh, it depends where it is as well. Taking your clothes off and all that. There's a the pressure in it. You don't like anything being touched, do you? I, just I remember don't when like, he said he don't like doctors. He, he doesn't check his balls. He doesn't like the feel. Mm. That's that's live with me. He doesn't like the feel. I think, do you mean that you don't like what it feels like in your balls when you're fiddling with them? Because I imagined it that you meant you don't like the feel, i.e. Uh, in your fingertips, you don't like the feel of your balls. It's, it's the thing of, you start thinking about what you're actually touching and there's something in there and you might break them and all that. I don't like <laughs> Break them! Oh, oh, they are delicate. I am scared with the little knobbly bits, yeah. What knobbly bits? <laughs> <laughs> Ah! But I tell you what, it's that thought uh, at the, <laughs> at, the uh, at the doctor's. It's that thing of it's not taking your clothes off in front of him, right? It's the way you've got to take your clothes off, but you actually to go behind that curtain to do it first. Yeah. So there's more pressure because then you can walk in out with nothing on. Right. <laughs> so it's like why do you have him to go behind there? Yeah. Rather than if I just sat there having a chat and he's going so yeah. how have you been? It's like all right, I'm just taking the pants yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the pressure. What was it, uh, don't take your clothes off. And you came out and he, put, he lit a candle and there was <laughs> yeah. some soft music on. The lights were day. Do 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 do. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 do. Or he said if you'll make you feel more relaxed, I'll take my clothes off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I'll do it in the form of a strip tease. Now, now, Carl, I'm going to ask you the question, knowing the answer. What do you think of, um, maybe a gay doctor just checking his testicles out? He's a professional, he just happens to be gay. That He's... would never happen, would it? What are you talking about? Why not? Oh! Speaking of, uh... Go on. Shh. Doctors. Um, no. Gay what? people are not. Do you know when we discussed, <laughs> uh, gay-only toilets? Yeah. Mm hmm It's only, uh, it looks like it's coming into action. No, it doesn't. Right. No way. It was mentioned again. Where? On... Your head. No, I think Do you think on. that people in positions of power are listening to this show getting uh, ideas from you? Tony Blair. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it really does. And, and the funny thing is, why are they getting upset? Why are gay people getting upset that they might have to have their own toilets? Carl, you don't know what you're talking about anymore. You're having a sly about. look. You don't know what <laughs> you're talking about. <laughs> okay, can we have Cheeky Freak after this? If you want. Placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. Steve, you're thinking of taking over as producer, aren't you? Well, I just think it's a shambles. I've asked for Cheeky Freak of the Week and it appears that Carl's not ready, he's not prepared. No, I can sort of remember it. It's just that I like to have contempt, all the information. Contempt for but the you listener. you've just had about, oh, you've just had a whole bunch of adverts and placebo and we're getting ready. We're chatting, we're having a chat and that. Right, do you want to sort yourself out in the future? Yeah, um, someone e this is what we were chatting about, someone emailed in about they watched the 200 pound tumour thing and, uh, um, when it was removed, um, it was carried away in a wheelbarrow, right? Carl said, what, even when she had it removed, she still carried it round in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> and he went, I thought it's sort of like she'd got become attached to it. <laughs> you, I mean, you are, you definitely are my favourite thing in the world. It's great. Look at the way he's looking back. But I think they're all the same. The people, I mean, I have had more emails about people saying I watched the 200 pound tumour. And I shaved me ass. Than anything else. Than anything that when we ask questions we about science, science we, 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 just, we talk, yeah, yeah. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. Science. Science. Science concept, we talk about political issues. One person emailed in, they said, I tuned into the 200 pound tumour documentary, it looked disgusting, I couldn't watch for long. What were you expecting? Yeah. That it might sing and dance? <laughs> Do a little show for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, these, so what's these the are really your listeners, Carl. Now I think we've, you know what I mean. You, you sort of, you find your niche, you attract your. Uh, I think me and Steve are pretty much just here. I they, think the people that we had in the early days, Rick, they've long since abandoned us. They jump ship. They've, they've, got, they've, they've got, got jobs. Yeah. they've got jobs. They're out now. They've, <laughs> they've been released. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're, 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 they're getting yeah. their life back together. Um, Carl, Come so on, what's Carl. the situation with Cheeky Free? I've, I've, I've got like a couple of bits. Like I say, I haven't got the in-depth stuff that I know. Oh no, because usually it's uh, you know it's pretty scientific. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do the jingle. We've got. To, we've come up with a new one, haven't we? The freak. Say chic. Cheeky Freak of the week. Right. Well, uh, couple of couple of bits. I don't know which one to use as the main feature for this week. <laughs> um, it's that good, is it? Well, there's been another one born, uh, what? little kid. You go on. Uh, four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Insult. <laughs> Just a guy who wears glasses. Come on. 
Four, hour, uh, four eyes, uh, two noses, two mouths. That's weird, isn't it? This bloke, did he also have two heads, two bodies, sort of born, sort of slightly separately? He wasn't uh, stood next to a mirror. No, no. It's weird, that, isn't it? That's all you've got. <laughs> I love that. That's weird. That. I went to the doctor said that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Mrs. Um, Parks, um, kid's got four eyes and two noses. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> Any clues? <laughs> Any clues? So well, that's that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. That's all the one. information. Well, I'll tell you what, no, that, that again, shouldn't be the main one. Okay, no, but, I'll answer but it. But like what? I say, this. What's the idea of this feature? What do we say all the time? Don't know. I always say, think about it. Think about what that would be like. <laughs> okay. What? Giving birth to him? It's no, no, no. Her. Be being, uh, I think it's a girl. <laughs> being like her. Two mouths. Four eyes. What would that be like? Mad, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know what this feature is. I don't know what's why. Is there another one? Is that, you said that I mean, too. I hope everyone took the opportunity <laughs> there during that silence to just think about what it would be like. I know I was. <laughs> what? Could she, could she talk with a mouthful? What? Is that allowed? Because she's got two mouths. Yeah. Yeah. Would that be alright in her house? She'd be eating Yeah, one she can talk with one mouth and eat with the other, right, I well, suppose. listen, the main one, right, you've thought about that, that's good. The main yeah. cheeky freak of the week, I haven't got all the details. Smallest person ever. <laughs> right. Well, how big would you say that is? Um, Carl was now sort of like holding his hands up like a fisherman, uh, long ways. That's about one foot. Right. Smallest, smallest man in the world. I, I printed the thing off and I can't find it. There's a little picture of him. Right. Uh, the odd thing was. But was why, why have you asked me how, did it say or was it a picture of him? I didn't really read it. Oh, you for of course you didn't. Jesus. I just saw it and thought, oh, that's what not, you, that's not, that's 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 I assumed it was natural size. No, it was that big. But what do you mean it was that big? Little fella, like that. But why are you doing that? What, what? It was a page with a little fella. How do you know that was natural size? No, it was, because it said it's world's smallest man. And the funny thing is, I, I remember, I've read the first line, I always read the first line, it said world's well smallest done. man. Well done, well done. The weird thing is, he got an head like a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> the shape of it, apparently, I don't know if that's got anything to do with his shape and size. <laughs> oh, but, uh, God. That, that big. His name's Mr. Watts. And, uh, the, the annoying thing is, what got me is, if you're that big, yeah. right, don't have your picture taken next to a fruit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he having his photo taken next to a fruit bowl? Dunno. <laughs> Whoever the photographer was, obviously having a bit of a laugh. Yeah. At his expense. Cause you, you would just stand in the middle of nowhere, you'd look normal and that way. He was, he was stood there, <laughs> just leaning on an apple. <laughs> 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 Leaning on an apple. <laughs> what is this? In what world do you this, have? No, it? This, this was, this was on, on the internet. <laughs> Leaning on an apple. Leaning on an apple. <laughs> was it Tom Thumb? <laughs> what is this? Are you sure it wasn't that some sort of sci-fi show they're advertising? No, no, it was, it was. Uh, <laughs> Leaning on it. Can you, uh, sorry, can you just lean on the apple? <laughs> just lean on the apple, man. <laughs> you mean if I were stand next to my chihuahua? <laughs> You're not taking the piss, are you? No, not at all. No. Could you? Would you mind leaning on this matchbox? <laughs> yeah. Leaning on an apple. And that's what it said, so he just said he's the world's smallest man leaning on an apple. Smallest man, said about his head being like a light bulb, I don't know what, what that meant. And uh, and I just thought, right, that, that'll do, that's that sort of cheeky figure of the week done. I think that was on like Monday, right? I found that, I thought that's done. Printed it off, <laughs> forgot to get it off the photocopier. Someone's nicked it. Play a record. That you got to- You know, it's just- it's, oh, Steve. No, can I just say no that, point. Carl, please, no if point. I say, let's have Cheeky Freak of the Week, and you haven't done your research, you haven't got the information, just tell us you can't do it. But don't lead us on. Don't say this on like the radio, hold your hand up to me and go, how tall is that? It's nothing, That's this radio. is nothing. It's nothing. Um, I, I think it was that big because he was leaning on an apple. It's not enough information. But, uh, imagine Trevor McDonald coming on, going, some news, some stuff, uh, how big's that? <laughs> How big do you think that is? Yeah. Because there was a fella, yeah, coming up after t Chris, more Chris Tarrant. It, it, Play a record. I, I just, I'm, I'm angry. I'm actually angry. And I, if Monkey News is anyway, in any way similar, <laughs> you've really pulled your finger out with that, have you? Mm -hmm. I think it likes it. The kids like stories. Like you say, they're not bothered if it's, if it's not true or anything. Or if you walk away before the ending because you've forgotten it. That's brilliant. why it's not blinking. It's so dumbstruck at the idiocy coming out of your goal. No, but you don't need to wear endings of stories. Maybe, like I said That's to the you. point. That's the point of a story, isn't no, it? No, it's not. That's the point why people, that's why people like stories because they're hooked into knowing what happened. No, because there's loads of films that happen and they have a funny ending. You leave there going, I wonder what's meant to happen. And then you make it up in your own head. You go, well, I bet what happened is that person went off and got married to that woman.
mm. and they lived that. And then in your head, it's the truth. It's actually what happened. But but I think that's better. Why are we told everything? What, so what would your end be to a story such as the Elephant Man? Okay, he's rescued from the freak show. He's put in the hospital. He becomes something of a celebrity. Then what happens? He discovered he had big ears and he could fly, and he 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 joined the circus and he was the the main attraction. Um, I wouldn't change change the end that much because at the end of the day, you can't you can't make something up that's not believable. At the end of the day, he's got an head like an elephant. He's not going to have a good life, is he? Hmm. So there's no point making out that he went on loads of women fancied him, and you know he he modelled hats. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so so he's got to die. The elephant man had to die, yeah. but. At the same time, was shot by poachers. Just show, just for his, show, a, for his a, a, show a few positives, you know, because I'm sure there was good bits in his life. I don't know what they were, but you know, look, look at everything. Uh, what was he like when he was a little baby elephant? They didn't cover what he was like as a kid, but you can get away with them sort of looks when you're a baby. You can be an ugly baby, and everyone goes, "Oh, isn't it nice?" There was some woman in a cafe the other week mm -hmm. that I was sat in. And she came up and she sat down with her mate and she was talking loudly, going on about, oh, the baby's lovely. They said it's got, uh, got lovely big eyes, uh, really big hands and feet. Now that doesn't sound like a nice baby to me. <laughs> I felt like saying it sounds like a frog. But I thought, I don't know her. There's only, there's only so much you can say to, to a stranger. I don't know what kept, kept me from saying it. That's what I was saying before about there's something, there's something... It sounds like a frog. There's something inside of you that stops you. Yeah, that's amazing that you had the urge to go. That doesn't sound like a good baby. What, love? I'm just listening <laughs> to conversation. That baby you're talking about sounds like a fucking frog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But something stopped him saying it. <laughs> I just came back from uh, America and uh, they love Halloween. They're a obsessed bit. over there. I mean, it's a it's a proper proper thing out there. Here, it's sort of half hearted. A few people, a few middle class families, sort of. Uh, but do you, you think know, it'll get up. more popular here though if we do find out that ghosts are about? Well, that would that never happen because they're not. No, okay? but if they did, then but suddenly that would be a big. Well, be Ameri a big America thing. makes things famous now um, because of because of film culture and everything. So. Yeah, it's it's all it's all it's all from that. I I, I doubt we uh, celebrated much at all, did we? Fifty years ago, so I think it's crept. Oh, up. certainly over here we didn't. But it's no. been largely introduced over here through commercial ideas, isn't it? Let's yeah, we can yeah. sell stuff for and, and and film and 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 things like that. And uh, but um, out there, it's it, it was they they start like weeks and weeks before, and they're decorated like proper proper. And um, but I saw a baker's a little bakery in um in in Soho. Um, and uh, it didn't look right with cobwebs all over it and spiders on the buns. Yeah. And but even though it's fake, it just—it's just. I don't think you should do it on a bakery. It, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you mean. It's it's you that, that's, that surely puts you off yeah. the the product a little bit. I, I always know. find it a bit depressing. Like last, I remember going into supermarkets and you see sort of these old women who who you know in their sixties and they're doing this job they don't really want to be doing but they've been made to dress up as a hat i know as a witch or as, as cinderella and it just well they could do it, it in like a morgue or something just to sort of brighten up the place well just so people aren't that scared imagine that imagine you're going to identify your your your, your dead relative and they go what's the spiders all over it's uh, 31st october no, oh, but, okay but just make it a bit spookier and have a bit of fun with it and let's not get serious about you know like i say passing on yeah, but, but those sort of people have to take their job seriously. I remember when um, my mum died, and um, uh, I had to go along, and I was talking about um, uh, the what wreath they wanted, and this this person, uh, quite rightly, had to turn off their sense of humour in a way because I suppose they're so they mustn't offend anyone. So I had to. He spoke like that at all times. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Okay, and what what um, would you like the wreath to say? Um, she was a mother and a, a, a grandmother. I went, yeah, my um, uh, mother, grandmother, and, and uh, what was her name? I said, uh, her name was um, Eva. I said, um, and I made a joke. I said, do we get a discount because her name's short? And she went, well, actually, um, didn't laugh, didn't didn't get yeah. that at all. She just went, yeah. just answer the question. She went, well, actually, you pay by the letter. And I thought, okay, that fell flat. I'll go again. I went, well, uh, 
Her friends used to call her E. Yeah, yeah. She went, I went, I'm joking. She went, okay. Nothing. Yeah. Bad audience. <laughs> bad yeah. time, bad audience. Tough crowd. Yeah, undertakers, so, never known for their- Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Their they don't crack jokes, Carl. A, f a, f a friend of mine, um, was, um, tr trained to be a doctor, and, um, in his first year, uh, when they actually, they practice, they intern at the, the hospital, um, he was watching this patient, and, uh, two other doctors came in, and I won't say his name, um, they said, uh, can you, um, can you go and check on Mr. So-and-so? He went, yeah, and change his drip. So he went in, changed his drip, came back out, the doctors came, after about ten minutes, they came running and said, what did you do? What did you do? And, uh, they went in there and said, I just changed the drip, he goes, well, he's dead. He's dead. He was going, well, uh, I just changed the drip, I did this and that, and they started laughing, he goes, no, he was dead when we sent you in there. Yeah. Now, that is almost excusable because it's imperative if you're a doctor Absolutely. to become accustomed to yeah. Yeah. the fact that people die and that it's- Exactly. You know, yeah, so that, so they were making a joke about a, a dead body that means nothing to them other than professionally. Yeah. You know, they were getting through it. He thought he'd just murdered someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, he thought he just killed someone. Um, but yeah, they have to be desensitised, but they wouldn't do that in front of the relatives. They wouldn't go, I had a laugh earlier with a young <laughs> yeah. intern, um, when your dad died, we sent him in to change the drip, didn't even check. <laughs> it was quite good. Anyway, let's get him out of here! Not what yeah. they do, but they do have a laugh. I heard about a doctor who was, uh, working on a brain, mm -hmm. right? Um, and apparently when they work on the brain, it's best just to keep you awake. Because, um, you know, just so you can go, that hurts a bit, and they go, oh, we best not touch that bit again. <laughs> That's right. the reason, Rick. Amazing. That's the reason. No, there is it's certain, amazing. There's certain operations, isn't there, where they go, you know, we can knock you out for that, but for this one we want to know. It's probably because the awake. brain needs activity. to be active in order to- Yeah, yeah they show activity, thing, but yeah, sure, yeah, no, so it's anyway. actually so you can wake up and go, yeah, no, no, I heard that, that stings. <laughs> oh, that stings. Don't pop that in there. You can't feel anything in the brain anyway. No nerve endings. Really? You what? can't- can't feel it, can you? Well, maybe there's another reason, but anyway, his head's open. He's sat on this chair. Um the doctor's going- I reckon you know, he was laying down. I thought he was laying down, but in your world he's not, he's sat on a hard-backed- I think it's more like chair. in front of a mirror, like a hairdresser type thing, right? <laughs> and he's cut the skin off. Uh, go, you, yeah, get a bit shorter there. So he's- So for the weekend, sir? He's, oh, I won't be shagging with no brain. <laughs> anyway, so he's, he's cut the skin off, and uh, you know, chopped a bit, and you're always, you're always gonna get bits, aren't you? Sort yeah. of. Whenever you cut anything, you end up with a bit missing. <laughs> but anyway, somehow it's it, it, it does the brain stuff. He fixes it. I don't know what he was doing, but if, don't you? If you, don't it, you don't know about. You don't know. You don't know the intricacies of brain surgery. That I find perplexing. So you're not a neurosurgeon. I don't. I don't want, oh, okay, so they on. sorted out the problem, right? Mm. And he goes, right. All we've got to do now is uh, stick the uh, the head bit back on. Yeah. Um, That's what it's called, by the way. The head oh, bit. Oh, this happened. This happened. Yeah. The head bit's connected to the <laughs> face bit. Yeah. So he sticks. Nurse, it. head bit. <laughs> Doctor, do you need leg bit? Not yet, nurse. Head bit, then leg bit. So they stuck the, the head bit back on, and then, uh, Can you pass me the sharpie sharpie thing? He was trying to sew it, and he was going, this isn't fitting this. He's going, I don't know, and, and do you know, like, because the Right, if this turns out that <laughs> it's someone else's head- Or no, 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 a, no. a toupee from the doctor next to him, <laughs> yeah. or a cat- <laughs> Meow! No, You've sewn a cat to my brain! <laughs> it's none of that, he's trying to sew it, and he's thinking, why isn't it fitting? And he's thinking, is it because the head's swollen? Because, you know, he's been messing about in it and things yeah. swell, don't they, and messed about yeah. with. So he's messing with it, he's going, I don't, I don't understand this, and he's panicking a bit because the patient's awake and chatting and stuff, and, mm. you know, what, it's difficult to have a normal chat when you're panicking a little bit. I know, bit. there's a queue as well, people want their brain done, and they're, they're, they're reading old copies of magazines, they're going, hurry up. So, <laughs> I'm going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to wash it? No, 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 just, uh, I'll wash it later. Just, just, just <laughs> take it off, do the brain, put it back on. <laughs> anyway, what happens is, he mm. has to start rubbaging. <laughs> it's a start rummaging. Sort of rummaging. 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 No! There's no N before the first G. Rummaging. Well, he starts looking through the, uh, he starts having a look through the bin. Because, oh, what? Because he's, he knows he's chucked a bit away of the skin. Right. Oh, where is goodness. this surgery <laughs> where a bloke's sitting up in front of a mirror and there's a bin? Is there a little basketball ring above the bin as well, so when he throws things it goes through there first? I'm just saying that's what happened and you were saying about things that happen you, and you've got a joke about so it. So he's rummaging and what, what happens? He said to him, he said the, the fellow was starting to sense the nervousness and he said, what's going on here? And he says, oh, I'm never gonna believe it, I've, I've lost a bit of your skin. Lost a bit and, of your uh, head, yeah. I can't Why is he cut- I don't understand, why is there- why That's is it in what two I mean. Bits? Because because things just break up, don't they? It's like chicken. When you see him walking around, 
everything's in place and it sticks together. <laughs> you cook it, suddenly it all breaks up. He'd, he'd cooked his face before <laughs> he cut it out. I'm just saying how, how flesh, it sticks together well yeah, when- he'd, he'd, he'd cooked the scalp before he'd taken it off his no, head, No, but it's he? just an example of how oh, skin okay. can break up with the muscles and everything. So he's, rum he's rummaging in the bin and does he find the head- He found the bit and then he's like, oh sorry about that and he, he sort of managed to stick it on. Right, he didn't stuff. wash it off or anything. Yeah, I'm he sure he gives it a bit of a rinse. But, um, <laughs> but I'm just saying how- Nonsense. You know, you've got to make a joke out of stuff, haven't you? Yeah, it's bollocks. If you're a doctor. Okay, that's good. So where was the joke in that story? At what point did- when- I thought this was a story well, about how jo doctors have a sense of humour. Yeah, when well, did he make a joke? Yeah, they sort of laughed and he sort of said, oh, there you go, it's back on, but oh, f good job we- you know, the bin men didn't come or whatever. <laughs> and, they, and they made a joke out of it. I've never <laughs> heard such nonsense! <laughs> I've, I've never can't heard just make such that nonsense! Up. But, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am, after yeah. spending like a week with them. Well, they, they told they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid, or no, just just like you know the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, and then they were saying things like Suzanne. So, uh, why is the moon out at night in the <laughs> seventh <laughs> of the day? Yeah. Oh God! Yeah. yeah. Oh uh, God! Was, there's it, three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces? Again? <laughs> <laughs> it was the bit when my dad said, "Don't waste money on a coffin for him. Just put him in a bin bag." <laughs> <laughs> your father said that about himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that, cos that is great. That gives me an idea. Coldplay, God put a smile upon your face on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Reading the paper yesterday, Rick, they uh, were talking about the fact that Blair has been, I think, he's been in Greece um, discussing EU matters. Oh, yeah. And they used uh, the old Trojan horse analogy yeah. to say, you know, here's a particular policy and it seems like they're trying to sneak, sneak in, some, in sneak in some kind yeah. of dubious Spies ideas. Spies to something else. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's always struck me, ever since I was first introduced to the Trojan horse theory, I never understood how it had come about. Do you know what I mean? So, I, 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 Carl has got a frown on him, like a thing I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, do you know what Tony the Blair is the Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 you know what the Trojan horse was? Go on. Um, Have you come across this before? Have you heard of it before? Um, wasn't that Ascot or anything? <laughs> 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 Go on. Well, the Trojan horse, what happened was, uh, it's, it's a famous kind of Greek story. Um, about the fact that, uh, the Greeks- In olden laid, times, Carl, yeah. olden times olden is, times, you know, specifically. the 70s. Yeah. The Greeks laid siege to Troy for six years. Um, Wait. Basically, in. things had got out of hand. Uh, I think the Trojans had done something with Helen, and someone else was annoyed. Anyway, it all got very complicated. It got out of hand, and the, uh, you know, the Greeks, Helen, the one with the mashed up face, because they used to use it to launch ships. Hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the Greeks laid siege to Troy, for six years, right, and they weren't getting anywhere. They were outside the gates, they were saying, let us in, they weren't, they were blah, blah, blah. So what they did was, they all disappeared, they all- They, well, they wanted to get in and kill everyone. Yeah, That's exactly. why they wouldn't be letting in. But they couldn't get inside the city walls. So what they did was, they left as a gift for the Tro Trojans, they left an enormous wooden horse, okay, uh, as a gift, and then they all buggered off. Like 40 foot high, 50 foot like, I mean a big, you know. Big wooden horse. An arc of and a horse. And the Trojans wheeled it into the city. So that's nice. Thought, what a lovely gift. Yeah. And lo and behold, he was hiding inside, but an entire Greek army, they no, left out, killed everyone in their sleep. Yeah. Alright, and that's where that famous idea of a Trojan horse has come from, you know, sneaking something in, disguised as something else. Uh, Alright. Yeah. Okay? So if you ever... Yeah. He doesn't really understand, does he? No, but, to be honest, nor do I. Well, I, this is the problem I've always had with this. It, I, I, it... Cos I don't understand who comes up with the idea, I mean, you I, I can't think that was the best idea. Well, no, no. There must be other ways. If they come up with that, how long did it take them to go? When they said, one, one, one before I said, oh, no, oh, whoa, 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 um, can I have a word? Go on, go General, on, yeah. um, I've got an idea. Yeah. Build a big horse, right, hide inside it, and then, then, ah, I know what you're thinking, they won't let us in even in the horse. Yeah. Leave it as a gift. Brilliant. Right, who are you? That's the best idea. Are you the guy that came up with, <laughs> why don't we get a giant bra <laughs> and twing everyone over the yeah, walls? Yeah. Let's get a, let's get a hundred foot ruler, and you know like at school we used to like flick the teacher's yeah. ass with like a, right, I could flick you over one at a time. Right. On this giant Thanks ruler. Thanks for your idea. <laughs> it's on the table. Yeah. We've got a couple of our suggestions on the way. What about a million elastic bands tied together? Yeah, and you all hold it down, and then I just let you go. Right. And you all ping over, and then you kill him in their sleep. You're the best tactician we've got, are you? Uh, what? The other thing is, right, these people open the, for some reason open the door, 
Well, I don't understand. Firstly, there's suddenly the the army that's laid siege to them for six years has disappeared yeah. in their place, an enormous gift of a giant wooden horse. Oh, they probably don't want to kill us now. But the, what they've done is they've built us yeah, a, they've a built horse. Yeah, they built us a great gift. Presumably there was a giant kind of card or something. Yeah. You know, um, something for you. You know, sorry about the laying siege and everything. Forgive you. Yeah. Here's an enormous gift. Is it? <laughs> Here's an enormous Trojan horse. We know it's what you've always wanted. We're, we're not inside it. <laughs> exactly. Why did they write that? Yeah. That's suspicious. But it's, well, wheel, mean, it, wheel it in anyway. But in terms of it as an idea initially, I mean, we're going to give them a gift. Well, what should we do? We could bake an enormous quiche. <laughs> yeah. Be inside that. We could have an enormous soap on a rope. As a, it's the fact that it's an enormous horse, yeah. an enormous wooden horse as a gift anyway. I don't know if this was a, a popular gift at the time, but it's also the stupidity of the Trojans saying, "Brilliant." I've always wanted an enormous wooden horse. Well, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> what yeah, are we going to wheel it in anyway? Leave it. Just wheel but, it in look, anyway. Wheel it in. Let's go to sleep. Let's worry about it tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. It, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's this idea of going. Someone going. Right, is this definitely the best idea? And they go. Yeah. And they look to the carpenter. Yeah. And he goes. Well, it's going to take a while. Yeah. We've got to get wood. We've got to get it. Well, you haven't put a door in. Yeah. How are we going to get out? Doesn't there? it look like a horse? It is. It's the worst horse I've ever seen. Why does like a cow? Wow. Well, yeah. The other is where we hide. <laughs> It's a horse. It's got no tail. It's, yeah, about that the rope that you climb up. But I don't know if it's one of those things where, again, because we kind of learn these things at school, that somewhere on the line the truth of it has disappeared, and we are. Well, I imagine it's lost a bit in translation. Yeah, because uh, in Eohippus in Greek means a giant tank. <laughs> right. So that yeah. actually was a Sherman. Yeah. And it burst through and it shot them all. Yeah. But yeah. of course, down the years they've tried. Look at Carl's face. Look at Carl's face. If everyone on webcam. Carl, just keep that face and look up to the camera, right? Just, right, get a, get a look at that now. Play a record, Carl. Educating Carl, we should bring that back. We should bring that back. Yeah? What do you want to learn about next week? We've told you about the Trojan horse. Uh, know anything about any freaks? Placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. So you've been educated there, haven't you? The yeah, Trojan so horse. Yeah, yeah. The Trojan horse. And that's, of course, where the phrase, beware Greeks bearing gifts, comes from. <laughs> Silence again. Yeah. You haven't heard that one? Go on. What, what's that again? Beware Greeks bearing gifts. Right. What do you think that means? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what, is that, is that used worldwide or what? Will they say that in Greece as well, or? Uh <laughs> I imagine Christmas Day is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't actually mean beware of Greeks wearing gifts. It's more to do with like, maybe it's too good to be true, or you know, it's just the opposite. To don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, that's probably where it came from. Was Justin that from Southend emailed in. He just said, uh, for the Trojans not to have spotted that it was a trick, they must have been the biggest bunch of moronic mm -hmm. here ever to have walked the earth. Does Carl have any Trojan in him by any chance? <laughs> Cheeky, innit? it, eh? What? Never mind. <laughs> well, I think that probably proves it. <laughs> I thought of another one I like as well. I was saying, you may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I've never heard, I don't think I've heard that. I have heard it, but I don't think I've ever used it in common parlance. Well, it's like, if you're gonna do something, you know, you might as well go the whole hog, depending on the, the outcome. Be because it's based on reality, that's why I like it, because obviously the poor people used to poach, and if they were caught stealing, you know, a sheep or anything, they would be hung. So if you're going to get caught, don't kill, steal a lamb. You know, at least feed your family for a few weeks. Right, sure. Kill a sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually hung. But killing a sheep. Oh, your dad'll be in trouble down in oh. Wales stealing stuff from that. Uh, oh, from that oh. phone box. Well, he, he has a couple of sayings, right? Your uh, father. Yeah, I've, I've never asked him what they mean. Um, <laughs> Why would you? Ask what, Suzanne. One is, uh, don't try and teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. What well, does that mean? That means, uh, it's patronising to, 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 of course, of course I know that. You're, you're talking to someone who knows more about this subject than you. But how did that happen then? How did that saying come about? Well, it's not. It, it's, it's a totally made up thing. It's like, your granny sucks eggs, isn't she? Because she's, she's older than you and it's probably a lost art or something. Alright. Uh, and the other one, um, don't Sucks don't... eggs? Sucks yeah. eggs, yeah. Sucks eggs. Sorry, I thought you said something else. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't nudge your granny when she's shaving. What? what? Sorry. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. Don't nudge your- sorry, sorry, Well that's slower, I can't- Don't, don't, don't nudge, nudge your, your granny when she's having a shave. Well what is that in context? Cause I can't work out what the analogy is there because that might just be you-, you when you were little you used to run up to your granny while she was shaving or something. 
But what, uh, why is your granny shaving? Well, no, what, uh, what context is that still in? Tell me the last time your dad ever said that and I'll try and work out what it means. Uh, I can't remember. I can't, I, I, I don't are know. Are you talking about specific to your granny? Yeah, I was just saying, where are you nudging your granny? She was going, yeah. get lost, Carl. She was shaving off her moustache. Or oh. giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's grotesque. <laughs> Sucking eggs, sucking eggs, sucking eggs. Oh, oh yeah. God. That's made, that's <laughs> yeah, made, that's made it, it worse. Carl's granny sucking eggs whilst I... <laughs> that <laughs> is my... a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> We've no idea. I don't know what that means. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. <laughs> what, yeah. Parmesan? I, I don't know. Maybe someone knows. You might be right, maybe. Well, email in. Tell us. Uh, yeah. I remember when I used to go to the zoo, there, it always felt there were certain animals that weren't getting a look in, really, that no one was particularly interested in. The tapir. Exactly. We were going straight to the snakes we were interested in. Yeah. Birds. So I don't remember being big, particularly interested in birds. Big cats, although it's a bit depressing. Uh, great apes. Great apes. Yeah. Reptile. You're right. Reptiles, yeah. Birds. Uh, uh, unless it's a big one that you think can oh, rip a, a dog apart. Yeah. A you go, brilliant. Eagle, brilliant. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Owls are brilliant. But, yeah, owls great, but-, but I've always wanted a little owl on my desk. I'd like be doing work and there'd be a little owl there and I'd go, can you give me that pencil? And it just sort of goes over and gets me friends and goes, cheers, and it just watches me and it thinks I'm brilliant. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Not really, no. No? No, I've never had a nurse have any kind of animal sat on my desk. No, Carl? You'd like a little owl, wouldn't you, that helped you? No, I had a, I had a little magpie, I don't know, we've thought about that. Oh, he came down and, uh, started pecking your grifter, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what was his name? Maggie. Sure. Inspired. Brilliant. And it, you took it to school and it didn't come back didn't once, come back, it? didn't come mm. back, didn't see it again. Oh, dear. Did it ever peck, peck your head? Because mm. you used to have hair, didn't you? Mm. Yeah. No, it did. It started getting a bit violent. Really? Yeah. Pro mate, was it becoming sort of of age where adolescents probably sexual frustration and sort, you know, because it, because I think magpies go for shiny objects, don't they? And you were probably sort of, yeah. probably losing it a little bit then in the front, and so when the sun was out- There's a bit of a sheen on the front. <laughs> they saw a glare and thought, I love that. Yeah. What is that? That's brilliant. Yeah. Or as it was sort of pecking away, it mistook it for a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of the noise. Because of the made. noise. Yeah, the hollow oh, sound. I squeezed his head, um, uh, yesterday. We should uh, just point out, if you're a new listener to, uh, I mean, you might not realise that one of, uh, Ricky's many sexual peccadilloes, I'm assuming it's a sexual thing, I can, can't justify it any other way, uh, is to just squeeze Carl's head. Yeah. Front wise, side wise. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's sexual or, you know, like when you've got a little kitten, you can't, you, oh, you want to squeeze his little face. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean by that, Carl? Yeah, yeah, a little I tuppy said that. Or I said before, squeeze a little lad. Yeah, exactly, and I, I feel that with you, because it's sort of like, it gives so much. Look at Carl's face, he mm. gives so much. It's like he, it is like he can understand what we're saying. Yeah. And that's what the connection is, I think, between me and, and, and Carl and other animals. <laughs> it's like he can um, understand what we're saying. But I squeezed it yesterday, and Carl went, I definitely heard some crack. Yeah. Because I'm trying to see how hard I can squeeze it. Yeah, I think that was you just thinking, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. I think the cogs just started to... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I think there is a danger, because I think there is a danger that you could, you could squeeze it too much. Yeah, I know. He did a good deed today, did, the other day, didn't you? Oh. Was it? Yeah. What were you up to? You were just, uh, you were talking about, like, you know, being assholed in the street and stuff. Mm. And, uh, I get assholed a lot by the homeless. Uh, don't we all, don't we all? Um... <laughs> you should go, you should go home to sleep. <laughs> I'm, I'm here, mate. But no, I, 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 I do treat him a lot. You know, <laughs> street them. I love that. You had a good day? Yeah. You've been good? Yeah. There you go. That's 50B. Suzanne does the, uh, save the children thing. You were talking about, you know, charities hassling you all the time. Mm. She does that. Um, and I sort of say, well, you do that. I'll, uh, I'll look after You'll you. You'll take care of the homeless. I'll take care yeah. of the odd tramp around where I live. And how, and how do you treat them? Loads of different ways. 50p I might give them. Yeah. Or I might, I, I, you know, they'll sort of say, oh, have you got any money? I'll say, what for? And they'll go, I'm really thirsty. Mm. So I go, well, hang on a minute, and I nip and get them a little diet coke. Sure, a well, diet they, coke? Yeah, they, they, they want to watch their weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going full fat. Oh, what an insult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. to, a, to a man like me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather treat them than... Because a lot of people spend spend money on, you know, problems abroad and stuff. Right. Oh, I God. just think, you know... Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Oh, God. <laughs> like what? What do you mean? Like, famine relief? Well, you do get sick of it, don't you? You know what I mean, it's that you get sick of no, it. No, I'm wait, just saying. Wait, go no, on. I'm just. I know. Just let let whatever you do now, Steve. Don't interrupt because I'm scared. But I just think 
it's it's worth it. Mm. It's, it's, there's no, so no, many no. There. There's freedom of speech. Yeah. There's we're not responsible. <laughs> yeah. There's he'll get away with it because he's a buffoon. <laughs> yes. And it is entertaining. Exactly. So, go so on, what's all I'm saying is you're what? saying you know do a tr who do I give me money to? Is it is it you know little you know sick kids or whatever or is it old people or whatever? Mm. HMV. That's uh, right. <laughs> money too. They get a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I just get sick of. Uh, you know, problems abroad. It's like, what do you do? What do you do with famine and that? What, what are you meant to do? How can you solve it? It's gone on for years. Yeah. And it just keeps going. We keep giving them money. They keep spending it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no, you're not getting any return for your cash. Well, it's just how, how many times, you know, they've got to learn. What do you mean they've got, got to learn? To learn? <laughs> what, are you going to teach them a lesson? What, what do you mean they've got to learn? What do, what do you mean? Well, what are they doing with it? Yeah, they must have like a better interest accounts or something where you know, look after, d get the, put the money in the right things. Sorry, do, do you think that Bob Galdoff sort of writes him a cheque? He goes over and he's in the helicopter and there's, there's millions of them, and they go, it's Galdoff from Boomtown Rats. <laughs> Brilliant. I go, I go, oh, oh, I hope there's one man that can help us. Yeah, I hope he doesn't sing. He's not gonna <laughs> sing, he's got some money for us. And he comes down and he goes, they are, do you want a cheque or, do you take switch? They go, we don't take switch. He goes, there's a cheque. They, they get he's things like- again though, isn't he, as well? I is mean, alright, you know, he used to work here, Bob, he's a lovely fella and that, but- Yeah, he's a lovely man. But how many times can you save the world? You know, yeah. he's, he's, he's over there again helping out, and it's like, well, you know, what do you do? Are you saying don't bother, because it keeps happening? No, well, I'm not saying that, you know what I mean, I'm not daft. <laughs> but that's what you're thinking. <laughs> and Carl, you are <laughs> daft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, I don't know what the answer is. Do you know what I mean? So, so you're just saying wash your hands of the whole affair, leave them to it? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Are you really just saying it's sort of, it's nature, it's tough luck, just don't interfere? Like a wildlife program. Is that what you're saying? Don't interfere. Are you basically just saying it's not my concern? This has got a bit heavy. Can we do Cheeky Freak of the Week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> My My Hey Hey, Out of the Blue, from uh, the album Russ Never Sleeps by Neil Young. Such a brilliant song. Oh, he's a great, great uh, musician. He's amazing. Yeah. He's incredible. I think we're playing Neil Young track a week. Okay. From, from now until Christmas. <laughs> brilliant, okay. All right. Excellent. On XFM 104.9, I'm looking to be Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We were talking about the homeless. Um, I saw a homeless guy in the week as I was walking down Finchley Road, and he was peering in the window of one of the uh, Addictions or something like that, just checking out the details on one of those cable TV packages. <laughs> And I thought, one step at a time. <laughs> I mean, if you, firstly, I don't know, start eating your dinner off a plate. Yeah. And then work your way up to, you know, a house, a home, a widescreen TV, a roof. digital television. But uh, uh, it's all. Uh, well, uh, that, 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 that might answer one of the questions. Because I, I keep getting recognised by homeless people, mm -hmm. and I never know what to say. I go, oh, is your. I think, well, uh, either they. They're not really homeless, and they've, you know, they. I don't know, they've got sort of digs or something, and they watch television. Or the scariest one is that. They, they've become homeless in the last few months sure, since yeah. the office. I think, oh God, that's really scary. Or they are watching it in Dixon's. They're coming out going, the office is on tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, going out to Dixon's. Or they think you're one of them. Or that, well, I have. I mean, the way you dress. Well, no, I, some that are probably not quite, yeah, got their faculties, so maybe a little bit worse for wear, um, think they recognise me. And they, 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 old scenarios where they're going, remember we were chatting, I was going, yeah, yeah, how are you? How are you? And it's just they recognise someone. Right, yeah. But, but that, that's, yeah. That, that's a bit weird. But I mean, uh, I think that's the worst thing, homeless. I, 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 on a serious note, it is, outside health, I mean, yeah. we're, we're talking about charity and I don't know, I, I, I sort of, um, uh, got this stand or as where I've been sort of like caught in the street. But the ones that I'd choose, I'd always think, Charity is what touches you. You can't change the world, but you can change your bit. So cancer, obviously, because my mum. So I give to cancer, and I think outside health, the next one must be being homeless because there's nothing you can do. It's yeah. it's got everything. It's you you're scared, bewildered, you're cold. Home. It's just everything. Even if you're healthy and homeless, eventually you're not going to be. Well, I just I do feel bad because you know I always feel that I want to give to uh, to the the health charities. Like cancer, for instance, because there's that fear that I might get it. Well, yeah, it's not just that. It's just like, yeah, if you're not health, they're, 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 that's the first thing, isn't it? If if your life if your life's being threatened, there's nothing else you can really worry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I don't know if that makes it wrong though. That I'm sort of it's like I'm investing in a possible future. Yeah. Well, not really, because it's the same for everyone, isn't it? But um, you know. Yeah. But, uh, oh. Yeah. I saw a homeless guy as well. Um, looking through the bins, but he wasn't pulling out food and scraps. He was pulling out newspapers. 
just having a read. Yeah. I always always find that odd. I see that a lot, homeless clients. I don't know if they're just <laughs> checking out the TV listings. <laughs> <laughs> or when he finally gets it. When's the office cable? on? Yeah. Yeah, the office, they've moved it. They've moved it to Choice and, uh, UK Gold. I don't, I mean, I don't blame him because, I mean, there is some cracking stuff on cable TV. Uh, there's some great stuff. But I was flipping through the other day and on digital TV you, you can see what other shows are on while you're watching something. I was flipping through and there was one and it was called, now, when are you ever in the mood to watch a TV show called I Survived a 200 Pound Tumour? <laughs> When was that on? <laughs> <laughs> because it seems to me that if you've got a 200 pound tumour, you probably want to watch something else that'll take your mind off it, Big Hold Brother on, or whatever. I'm not 200 pounds. Well, it, I don't- I can't imagine what this is. A 200 pound tumour? I can't, it must have been an error. 200 pound tumour? It must have been a 200 pound tuna. <laughs> it yeah. was probably someone fell in the water. <laughs> yeah. And it came I in. I survived a 200 pound tuna. Yeah, and it was yeah. just a spelling mistake. Sure. A 200 pound tumour? That's like- isn't that like kind of having- That's Mr. another T person. <laughs> that is another yeah. person. Maybe- Oh my god, maybe it was a they, it, all, all his life they told him it was a Siamese twin. <laughs> but yeah. someone had just painted a little face on it yeah, when he was at school. school. Just drawn a little face exactly, on it. Yeah. yeah, and they go, It's not your twin brother. I goes, Isn't it? I goes, No, it's a tumour. We better take it off. It's two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds. That can't be right. You sure it wasn't twenty pounds? I'm assuming that's what it what it probably would have been. But I, it was certainly two hundred pounds on the digital thing. Like, maybe that's a mistake. I don't understand and I wouldn't want to go forward either. So cause... when you went back, so, what, so suppose you went back to caveman times, right? You, you are you, right? You'd fit in fine. Oh, I'd be brilliant. Yeah. I'd be the king. Maybe. No, I would. Right, what would you do then? No, How would you... like you said, they'd be worried they go, they go, they go, they go, they Yeah. <laughs> right. It's slightly different, isn't it? No, it's not. It's exactly the same. We haven't changed bodily. I've got a pair of pants on. Right. So you go back naked, so you'd fit in. No. Well, because I'd look all pale and. No, no, no. You wouldn't go back naked. Or they go. They would take your pants off. The first thing they do if you went there with pants, they would rip your pants off. No, they wouldn't. They would. They you wouldn't. can't go back with pants on. You've got to go back naked. It's summer, they're walking around naked. Why would you go with pants on? Before you get in the time machine, you'd have to take your pants off. No, because I want to come across like I'm something from the future. Okay. So I walk in. They're going, whoa. What are they doing? What do they say? They just can't believe it. They're going, what's going on? What do you say? I say, I'm just visiting. What are you wearing then? What are you wearing? Jean, this. I've gone like this. Okay. They would definitely want to see... No, they wouldn't. They would, to they wouldn't, because they're sick of seeing it. To them, it's like being on a nudist beach. They're no longer looking at cock and bollocks and tits and arse. They're seeing it every day. To them, it isn't weird. To me, I'll probably be looking at them. I'm put some pants on. I don't understand why they couldn't do that, really. They, I think they did the wheel before the pants. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, I think they did. I think they did. I think they did. Biology. The life sciences. Isn't it amazing that we're here, that anything is here, that we're having a chat now in front of these cameras for a DVD extra and we started off as a single cell a blob, a little thing that had the right temperature in the right compound, the right minerals, ultraviolet, a little thing happened, this little nucleus, it was just a, just a cell. Okay? But I don't like thinking about that. And then it divided, then it... Yeah. Got a skin, and then... Yeah. I don't want to know, you know, when people get in touch from Friends Reunited, I go, that was 20 years ago, I don't want to know. Right. So I certainly don't want to know about 30 million years ago. Okay. I want my little time zone that I'm right. born, I live, and I die in. Okay. That's all I can worry about. It doesn't fascinate you at all. It doesn't fascinate you at amazing, all. It is amazing, but it hurts your head, doesn't it? I don't the, the, like the, it. I don't just like by it. chance something happened, uh, a genetic mutation, and that, and that, and then that was chosen by nature. It worked. It survived. Okay? But certain things work and they're not that impressive, like slugs. You always say, well, it's evolved. It hasn't evolved. Okay. We share about 70% of our genetic material with a slug. What seventy percent? Well, what what seventy percent has that got that I've got? It's got seventy percent. I've coughed up stuff that looks like a slug. If that's a seventy percent you're talking about, but there's nothing else, nothing in a there slug. There is. 
Nothing. You share you share DNA with an onion. I've heard that. That's the roundness of the head, probably. I'm telling you that the slug has about 70% of the same genetic material as the human species. We're that close. We're that close. All the hard work, all the hard work was done then, in terms of, like, getting it right. A slug got it right. A slug is as evolved as us. It's perfect. It's not perfect. Why? Okay. It's definitely not perfect. Why? Why isn't it perfect? It's just not great. I've, I've, I've had to deal with slugs a lot when they were, like, blocking up my shower. Right. There's a gang of them in the tube. How can they be uh, as evolved as me? What are they doing? <coughs> Sat there. Just all mush. Mushified. <laughs> mushified! Right, talk know. me through it. What happened? Just was having a shower and the shower basin filled up. I was right. Like, What's going on here? Yeah. So I got a plunger. Right. So bits of black stuff. I mean, what is this? I had to t unscrew the, the, the plug hole bit. Couldn't quite get down there. Yeah. To take the tiles off the side of the shower thing. Right. Got in there, unscrewed it all, got the pipe. Just slugs all in there. All sat in there, blocking it up. Don't right. know how they got in there. But that's what I'm saying to you. They don't know what they're doing. What they're doing, knocking about in there. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> now, what are they doing? I don't know to this day what they do. I watch insects, they, you know I like insects. They I'm survive. That's what they do. They're chosen by nature. Yeah, but they don't nature. know. There's, there's another one. There's loads of insects knocking about the house. There's a spider in the outside shed. It's not an insect, nor is a slug. A slug is a mollusk, a spider's an arachnid. All right. Okay. The spider's in the cupboard outside. Right. I'm not joking. It's been there now for about two years. Right. Could be three. Okay. Same one. It's quite big. Right. Just sits there in the corner. Right. I go in, I smash its web up. Why? Because I don't want it there. Right, fine. I don't want to kill a spider. Right. But I'm sort of saying, I'm wrecking your house. If you move, there's no problem, move. I go back, it's built its web again. Just right. sat there like that. Doing nothing. <laughs> what is the point? Well, it's not doing nothing, is it? Well, it's building its house. Every it's time hunting. I wreck it. It's hunting. It's not even doing that. Well, it is. That's, what it ha that's how it does it. It's made, a, it's made a web and things fly into it. Then it wraps them up, sucks the juice out. Right. But for what? To then sit in this shed? It's what not are you doing? Existence. What Why are you... didn't it go? But you're eating. You're staying in your flat. You want to go back to Mallorca five years ago. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, well, it depends. I've been. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in another billion years? You'll be the slug. The human race could be the slugs. There could be this amazing being that, that, that evolved from us going, what are they doing? People go, well, you know, 70% of their genetic material. You don't know how it's going to go. You stood on the shoulder of giants. You stood on a few slugs, you told me, in your flat. But we share our ancestry with those slugs. We are related to slugs. I have never watched Who Do You Think You Are? And they've gone, they've gone to your family tree. Do you know uh, Terry the Slug? He's a great uncle of yours. We don't need to know where we've come from. And nobody would want to hear that either on that program. You would not want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, but you're... So it's nothing to do with us. <sighs> oh. It's happened. It's all, all an accident. But it's a matter of degrees. Your brother. Right. Okay. Very close to you. Your cousin. I haven't seen him for about 12 years. <laughs> okay, genetically speaking. Couldn't get closer. Okay, it's the closest you can be, a brother, a son, a mother, to accept, you know, accept a clone, an identical twin, okay? So, cousin, a bit less, great cousin, da -da -da. bloke around the world, da -da -da. chimp, marmot, mouse, bird. I don't know what you're doing now, you're just saying words at me. What's a marmot? <laughs> doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but you're related to him. You're related to him. With all our evolution, now we can sit around doing Sudoku and inflaming our mind and inventing art and stuff. Um, so I want to I wanna use, to use you know, scientific method. Let's use a bit of logic, okay? 
I'll give you a couple of conundrums because I want to see how, how you've evolved. Okay? Um, there's two children sitting on a bench. Yeah. Okay? Okay? Ready? Yeah. Okay. There's a boy and a girl. Okay? They're the, they're the kids on the bench. Yeah. There's a boy and a girl sat on a bench. Yeah. The blonde-haired child... Yeah. ...says... I'm a girl. Right. The brown-haired child... ...says I'm a boy. At least one of the children are lying. Which one's the boy and which one's the girl? But what else can I see there? Can we I tell by the way they look or am I no, blind? You, no, you can't see. I'm blind. Yeah, you can't see. I'm just, I'm telling you. There's still the information you need. And they actually sound, I can tell by voice. No, or... no, no, you can't. No, 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 no. You can't. I'm telling you, okay? So hang on. Say, Two say children sitting your... on the bench. Right? You've come to me, I haven't seen these. No, no. I have not heard them. You've come no. to me and yeah. said, I've just been in the park. Yeah, yeah. Say again, I've just been in the park yeah. and I've seen yeah. a lad and a girl, one had brown hair, one had blonde hair. Yeah. The, the, the blonde-haired child said, I'm a girl. Yeah. The brown-haired child said, I'm a boy. At least one of them is lying. Which one's the girl and which one's the boy? I don't know. Well, think. I don't want to. Why don't you want to? I don't want to work it out. It's a very easy one. Just think through the scenarios in your head. I'm a girl. Who said that? The brown-haired one. I'm a no, girl. the blonde-haired one said I'm a girl. One of them is lying? Yeah, at least one of them is lying. The lad? So just the, just the boy is lying? Well, both of them are. Well, they've got to be both lying, haven't they? Why? Because there's a boy and a girl there. One of them saying they're a girl, one saying they're a boy. Yeah, so if one of them's lying... But they're both lying. They have to be both lying. So the blonde-haired kid's a boy. Right. See? But what, 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 are we, what are you doing with that? Because it trains the mind. To think logically, to think through it. That's, that's imposing a scientific method. Found one of Suzanne's magazines, right? Uh, flicking through, because there's always interesting stuff in there. There was something about, um, uh, about swingers. Right. I was like, what's all that about? Yeah. And it had an interview with some people talking about, you know, how they, uh, sleep about a bit. Yeah. And I thought, if my wife looked like that, I probably would. Because <laughs> uh, there was a few pictures of them and they were all pretty ugly. Yes. I thought, right. So, I took that in, soaked that up, thought, there you go. Uh, carried on reading. There was a bit in there about how women still have crushes, right? Yes. Uh, and the woman was going on about, uh, how she's 38, right? But she still fancies Chris Martin from Coldplay. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, even though it'll never happen, she's still got that little bit in her head. Yeah. That thinks one day she'll leave Gwyneth, right? And end up with, with, with her, right? Right. Anyway, so I'm flicking, I'm thinking this is a bit boring, but I'm flicking through it all, and, uh... Is this a, is this a Rockbusters clue? No, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I read, I read further on, read th further on, right, and, uh, she said, you know, we, we, I like to go out with my mates, and we come up with lists in pubs of people who, like, oh, you know, they, they'd be nice to go out with. She also came up with a, a list of unlikely lust objects, I think she called them. Yeah. Guess who was in that list? Ricky Gervais. Think again. Carl Pilkington. Right. Next one. Johnny Vegas. Said, lanky co-writer. <laughs> Rubbish. Lanky co-writer. What Steve. do you mean lanky co-writer? Well, don't need to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he said... <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. Let's not talk about... I, I don't know why you're laughing at my expense. I'm an unlikely <laughs> lust object. <laughs> yeah, but... But, but you, you... Yeah, what was it called? The, the list? Uh, the, the unlikely lost object. Yes. Yeah. You were in there. Right? Who else was? Well, you weren't in there. Richard, were... Richard Maidley. Fine. Yeah. It's a good looking guy. Alistair Campbell. Brilliant. Yeah. Another handsome dude. Hmm. What are you talking about? How can you, how are you, what, you, you think I'm ashamed or embarrassed about that? I'm proud of it. What magazine was it? I need to buy a couple of <laughs> Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> need to get a t-shirt made. It, 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 yeah, and did she leave her number? Yeah. <laughs> what, so what magazine was it? 
Just, I'm, I'm just out of interest. Just, I think it's know. called Red. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. But now you've dissed those people that are putting themselves in their swingers because you've said they're ugly. So now we know what magazine it is. People are going to look at that. People are going to look at that poor woman and they're going to know you think she's a hog. No, but I, I think they even know. Was there a picture <laughs> of the woman who was drawn up the list of unlikely lust objects? Mm -hmm. What was she like? I wouldn't waste me, sorry. Uh, <laughs> thanks, mate. Oh, I know you're on my side. Thrills on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me. Steve Merchant, object of unlikely last object. Steve Merchant. I'd like to have that now, prefixing my name everywhere I'm written about. I know, yeah. Did he make the freak list? Woo! Which is, in a, which is a different magazine, isn't it? And I'm joking, of course, Carl Pilkington. A man of sort of quiet, quiet dignity and, <laughs> and in a way, he's got his own sort of inner beauty, hasn't he, Carl? Not really. Don't you think? Well, I'll tell you why I don't think it is, because the woman that wrote the piece, saying that I was an unlikely lust object, has just emailed in. And Carl, you've offended her quite considerably. What did he say? Why? I wouldn't waste my time, is what you said. She's re repeated oh, that. Yeah. I wouldn't waste my time, the flaming cheek. Although it's a horrible picture, I am, of course, in real life, a vision of loveliness. I'm not 38, I'm 25. I don't think Stephen's that unlikely lust object. A sense of humour is important, and he's welcome to my phone number if he wants it. Is <laughs> a sense of humour is important, that's a down Is she a swinger? Uh, stop it! Don't have a go at the I'm woman! I'm, mess I'm messing about, she knows I'm messing about. Well, how are you messing about? You I've told you this, though. I've told you that anyone could be listening, haven't I? I've told you that before, things you say. And, and you, but we encourage him. We say, what does he look like? We, but it's meant to be rhetorical. That was a joke. That was Stephen's joke, what does he look like? I.e., him joking, like, oh. I I'll call her up because I'm on a list, and then you have to say that. I mean, I that's what I mean. J j j chances are, if you know, if she likes Stephen, she hasn't seen him. She listens to the radio. So mm. the likelihood is that you know she was listening to this show. <laughs> yeah. So think. Will I drop the thing I was going to do about Lisa Riley? <laughs> well, <don't, laughs> she's not listening. Some she's, people deserve it. She's still at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what, from Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> There's an all-you-can-eat place going out of business as we speak. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell, <laughs> shit back, you kill me, I can't do Bambino, please leave now! Please leave! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... No, but she knows we're only messing, this Yeah, uh, this everyone knows thing. you're only messing, we're all only messing, I hope we don't offend anyone of, uh, you know, any kind out there. We're only joking, aren't we, Carl? Yeah. Say something nice about her. What can you remember of the picture that you could that you could say was good? Maybe she was wearing some nice things. Wasn't anything to be honest. I'll have another look and have a look. I think she had a nice shirt, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Forthcoming single from British Sea Power. That's called Carry On. I love it. It's great. It is fantastic. Yeah. On XFM 104.9. What do you make, Carl, of these people? I was reading a paper today. They've been queuing up for 12 hours last night for the new Harry Potter book. Oh God! <laughs> oh <laughs> I knew you'd God! Like it that. really annoys me. Everything. Uh, uh, oh. God, it really annoys me. But who has to? I mean, I know it's just a kind of willful sort of stubbornness. I see, I, I see adults yeah. reading it, you know. I, I, oh. Well, I was up in Hampstead last night, and uh, there's a, a Waterstones branch of that, and there were a couple of people outside queuing, waiting for it to open. Um, what they look like? Well, I mean, things like the ones that come out of a forbidden, pl forbidden planet on a yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I mean, what do you yeah. expect? There was one guy. I mean, I don't mean to disrespect him, but he was a big bloater. Shorts, wearing shorts. I don't want to see his big fleshy legs. He looked like John O'Coleman, if I'm not. Well, there's nothing wrong with John O'Coleman. He wore a knapsack. Are. They always seem to have knapsacks for some reason. Well, they got old. They got old papers in there, haven't they? <laughs> exactly. Got a probably... Nine years supply well, of the mirror. Like four of them. There was a couple of women, a couple of guys. All looked basically the same. They were interchangeable, and um, get they were there from them in a minute. <laughs> yeah, get an email. Yeah. I am the fat bloke with fleshy legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recognise your description. I like to read these books whilst listening to XFM <laughs> of a Saturday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, I was sort of watching them from where I was, and I, and they were, must have been there for about an hour and a half. They were obviously strangers, they'd all, they, their common interest was Harry Potter. They were reading, they were sort of chatting to each other for about an hour and a half. So as I'm leaving, I wander past them, an hour and a half in to them having met each other, the conversation is, uh, all I heard was, uh, huh. well of course apparently she cried when she finished the last one. And I uh. thought, they what, they, they got, they've not moved on, the conversation had not moved on. No, they might have been talking about Dawn French, you know, her chocolate orange. <laughs> yeah, by then. Yeah. I know she <laughs> cried when she finished the last one yeah. once. Yeah. But, but um, um, I've yeah. got no time for them. I, no, just, I'm you know, I. Pop into Walrus now. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, get it tomorrow, read it. You're, you're gonna get home at half one and start reading it. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. So you can put it on the internet. Oh, God. Your opinions. Oh, it annoys me. It is extraordinary. Uh, the whole kind of, the whole kind of Harry Potter phenomenon is passing me by. I, I know, I know, well, people, good, good luck to her, you know. But you meet adults who are, um, you say, what are you doing? They say, I'm just rereading Harry Potter. What, you couldn't follow it the first I time? Know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not her fault, you know, she no, made three hundred million pounds by writing a few books for I'm her sure kids. Well, good, well yeah. done. But, um, I'm sure they're, I mean, I'm not sure they're very good, but, uh, I'm, I haven't read them, I'm, I'm sure they're not. But no, I don't know. Well, I've, don't I've, know I've, no, 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 I'm joking. Books, I've, I've you no idea. a book about a little wizard. <laughs> With glasses. Yeah, and make millions. <laughs> you, you think it's so easy. If you think it's so easy, you do it. You you like him because you look a bit like him. Well, well, you know. I wonder if he's on a well, that wish list. That that woman who emailed in. Why was she making a list of unlikely? Can we leave this now? No, but I mean, what was it? What was context with it? It was like, here's my top ten weird looking fellas that I no. do. What was it? <laughs> no, no. But what what was the what was she was talking about? What what was, she'd started talking about? What? Body wax in the wind. And by the way, while I'm here, here's ten blokes that I would if I had to, and they're a bit weird, you'll be surprised. What was the context? I forgot. <laughs> He's scared to say anything now! He's scared to say anything! Oh, bless him. I just was looking at a picture because I was attracted to it because she was good looking and that didn't read on. <laughs> Is that alright? <laughs> well done. That's, uh, got you out of that little mess. Yeah, yeah. Well but, uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. Can't be honest with it. Have you read them? Uh, no, because the, the first time it came out, uh, I was a bit confused, wasn't I? Because I thought it was about Of course you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course what? what? This is a what? It's a book. No, I, I, I got confused with the little, uh, the little rabbit. I thought it was her, didn't I? He talked about it when Beatrix it Beatrix Potter. Yeah, I got, I got mixed up with that, so I sort of missed out on the first one anyway. <laughs> you were just running around confused. <laughs> so it was like, like <laughs> yeah. too, sort of too late to get into it, I think, after. Yeah, it's too late now, yeah. Um. It's impossible. Same no, with Shakespeare. Pretty... If you weren't around, you know, the day <laughs> yeah. the day he wrote the first ones, there's no point in going back. But it's all the fuss that she's getting as well. Like, um... well, I think it's because she's a British industry now, isn't she? I mean, it must have made what billions. Well, it's the perfect success story. She writes a, a story for her children, and it becomes a worldwide phenomenon. You know, it's not cynical. It's just, it's just a great. Story. Didn't your dad ever pop anything down in writing? <laughs> I'll tell you what, my mum wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, there's been loads of things, little inventions she's come up with and that, which she's been too busy doing other stuff. But she used to come up with stories for me as a kid that I'm sure if they came out they'd be a success. Yeah. Go on. Do you remember any of them? Uh, there was one about a little red car. I can't remember how that ended.